An old master is any painting that was painted in Western Europe for the most part, starting in about 1280, you know, at the beginnings of the Renaissance, and right on through about 1850. Sotheby's has decided to create Old Master Week, which is an exciting event for all of us because not only do we have fantastic Old Master painting sale, we also have an Old Master drawing sale, a European works of art sale, and this year we're doing a single owner sale from the collection of J.E. Safra, as well as a single owner sale from Charles Reiskamp. Pictures from the Dutch uh, 17th century, um, Flemish 17th century, um, all the way to the English 18th century and French 19th century and back very far into the Renaissance. So there's really something for everybody in this sale. What we have been noticing over the last few seasons is that old masters have uh, become to appeal to a broader audience. Um, people that collect, for example, contemporary painting have started turning to earlier pictures. Some old masters can be very modern. Um, any kind of great work of art tends to resonate with us today. It's, a, it's, it's something that spoke to humans in the 16th and the 15th century and it still speaks to us today. This holy family with the Madonna and Child is by Perino del Vaga, one of the most important and elegant painters of the late Italian Renaissance. Despite the way the painting looks now, it's actually in extremely beautiful condition. It's under a varnish which is aged and discolored over many, many centuries, and it probably hasn't been restored in the last two or three hundred years, if ever. Underneath, you see wonderful uh, details, wonderful retention of paint, and even small flecks of gold here in the hair of the Madonna, in the hair of the infant Christ, uh, as well as along her collar and along the border of her cloak. It's an exceptionally elegant picture, and one hasn't been seen like it on the market for many, many years. We also have, probably from a few years later, during the years when he was working in Genoa, a wonderful drawing um, by these same artists. I think clients will really be interested to see both pictures, and I expect this one will do exceptionally well at auction. This Madonna and Child is one of my favorite pictures in the sale. It's by the Milanese artist John Petrino. What I think is really fascinating about this Madonna and Child is the way that different artists could look at a theme and be inspired by each other. John Petrino certainly was looking very much as Master Leonardo. And even more so, John Petrino's influence on Jos van Cleve, the great northern uh, painter of the early 16th century. About 23 paintings by Jos van Cleve in his studio of this composition are known. Quite different than this painting, much more northern in their handling, their light, their coloration, with none of the lovely smoky softness uh, of flesh tones that um, John Petrino learned from his master, Leonardo. Although it's painted in England, this Venus in Adonis by Jacopo Amagoni exemplifies Venetian Rococo taste. It depicts the young figure of Adonis, the young boyfriend of the goddess Venus, getting ready to set out on the hunt. What Venus doesn't know, of course, is that he'll never be coming back, which simply makes this beautiful depiction of, of love between a couple even more poignant and evocative. One of my favorite and most unusual pieces in the sale is this wonderful Desco da Parto, or birth salver, by the Florentine artist Bartolomeo de Fusino. It shows a scene of everyday life in Florence, the birth of a child. Bartolomeo de Fusino here pretty much adheres to social custom, and no men are allowed in the birthing room whatsoever. We see here also servants bringing uh, things for the new mother to drink uh, on salvers. And in fact, these birth trays seem to have derived from that custom of bringing drinks to a woman who's just had a baby on large ceremonial platters. As with most of these birth trays, there's paintings on two sides. And on the other side, we have a really rather interesting image. It depicts a young boy, probably representative of the newborn himself, wearing a gold and uh, coral amulet uh, to ward off evil spirits. The inscription around the edge says that he's urinating gold and silver threads. The coat of arms on the right hand side of the plate is that of the Montari family. And it seems likely that this was commissioned by that family who were famous goldsmiths in Siena in the early part of the 15th century. This painting is by Garrett Dow. Garrett Dow was an artist who grew up in Leiden, which is a small town nearby Amsterdam. What's important about Dow is he was, in a way, the founder of the Leiden Fine Schilder School, which is fine painting. But if you look at the little details on the forehead, the little lines, 
it, it's just an extraordinary picture in immaculate condition. As time moves on, works of this extremely high level of quality and condition get harder and harder to find, and this is certainly one of them. This is a painting by an artist called Willem van Vliet. This painting was done in 1627, which is, in my opinion, an extremely important moment in the history of Dutch old master painting. What I find so amazing about this picture is we do not know and cannot figure out what is going on. Um, and I almost think psychologically it's sort of fun. Some people think it's to do with truth and falsehood. You know, that all the mass figures are covering the truth and he is a scholar expressing the truth. What I can see is that the painting is of the highest level of quality. The beauty of her face and the way she's painted. The colors are just simply divine. The picture is in absolutely remarkable condition and it's without any question the masterpiece of this artist. This is a portrait by Jean-Baptiste Greuze who was a very important French painter of the second half of the 18th century. His name is Florentius Josephus von Erdborn. Erdborn was a 21-year-old man when he decided that he wanted to be painted by Jean-Baptiste Greuze, who was a very illustrious painter, t reaching the end of his life. In fact, he died in 1805, and this picture was painted in 1804. This man then proceeded to collect the most remarkable group of old master paintings, all of which he eventually at his death gave to the Antwerp Museum where they are to this day. And in fact, one of them currently is in New York in the Gossart exhibition by Jan van Eyck, which was one of the great masterpieces he had. He's the patron saint, I would say, of Antwerp. Gros did a marvelous job, obviously, it's a very important portrait. When the expert on Gros saw this, he was just so excited to see it again. Just such an important late work by the artist. On October 21st, 1774, William Petty, then Earl of Shelburne, traveled to Rome and met with Vernet in his studio and commissioned this extraordinary pair of landscapes. And we're lucky in this sale to have one of the pair. This is a particularly beautiful picture. Not only the scale of it, but also the light, as you can see, is really extraordinary. The picture has only had three owners and as such is in remarkable state of condition. Clearly, all of those owners understood its importance and took tremendous care of it. It's rare that you see a picture of this scale that is so lively in all of its detail. You're looking at a picture that is almost in pristine condition. This portrait by Lucas Cranach the Younger of a striking woman. It's an extraordinary portrait for many reasons, but I think the most important aspect is how contemporary it was both then and now. I think the stark background against which she's painted contrasted with this extraordinarily elaborate velvet costume with this embroidered foliage and then this beautiful jewelry really adds to the impact that she has on you. We've recently done infrared reflectology, which reveals that he first penciled on a drawing and then painted on top. And what's most interesting in this process is that you can see that he changed his mind and decided to move the hands entirely. It really shows you how much thought he put into this composition. It was so important to him. I think what makes this picture particularly unique is that it is truly the best example by this artist to have come to the market. This picture behind me by Jan Miel is a masterpiece of his late style. Here we see Jan Miel departing from his early genre scenes and taking on the much more challenging aspect of classical figurative scenes. This fantastic painterly example is particularly interesting because it shows how this northern artist working in Rome had so absorbed the style of the artists around him. I've been in the old master department 37 years. I have seen a great deal of changes in our market. Um, people keep thinking that they're going to all go away and there'll be none left. But you know, this sale, it's one of the deepest, richest sales of old masters that I've, I can remember. And as you look through the catalog, you keep 
coming across pictures that are just so wonderful, undiscovered, unknown, well estimated. It's just, we've, we've been very lucky. We've been able to really put together an auction that has something for everybody, but also is of extremely high quality. This is a particularly exciting Old Master painting sale for us. It was a tremendous amount of hard work to put together, but I think that everyone will see that the range of material and the quality of material is truly exceptional. Mm -hmm.